So good morning. I want to welcome you all to our, truly it's our first official um, coming together once the school year has started. We're usually doing this either at the end or even trying to come together at a convening. So it's just so awesome to be able to experience with you this um, opportunity to be a networked improvement community in the um, under the intent that we originally um, designed. So thank you guys for taking the time to be a part. Um, we welcome you. We want this to be a free flowing organic kind of conversational meeting today. And so I hope that you're able to walk away having an opportunity to have engaged with one another and learned with one another. So again, thank you so much. We look forward to hearing about your um, progress over the past two and a half years. And we um, just look forward to the rest of this meeting. So with that said, we'll, we'll step into um, our connection chat. And so, you know, we always start with um, just kind of trying to bring us all together. And so our connection chat, we want you to do what's on the screen. I think everybody on the call has engaged in watching Saturday morning cartoons or once cartoons kind of started to fade away, um, engaged in watching Saturday morning sitcoms, depending on your age. And so um, I want you guys to list your favorite Saturday morning cartoon or sitcom, and then I want you to put why. And so we want you to drop that in the chat. And what we're gonna do is once you get that dropped in the chat, Ms. Patterson is gonna share out um, some, of your, some of your responses. So again, at this time, if you would just take a couple of um, seconds or um, probably about 30, 45 seconds to drop in the chat, one of your favorite Saturday morning cartoons or sitcoms and why. Okay, so as they're coming in, I'm seeing Smurfs. I think that's what I was gonna put. Uh, I, I watched the Smurfs as well. And their reason why is because they embraced all. Um, you have Voltron, Lions coming together and showing teamwork. Uh, I see Smurfs again, Looney Tunes. It was just such, such a classic. Um, Scooby-Doo. Um, several Scooby-Doo here um, always had a mystery. They used teamwork to solve mysteries. Uh, several people with Smurfs. Tom and Jerry, it was always hilarious to see how Jerry was always outsmart, how Jerry always outsmarted Tom. Gummy bears, working together to solve problems. Looney Tunes, DuckTales, I remember DuckTales. <laughs> I wanted to be rich like Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> Um, lots of Scooby-Doo's here. They, they, because they love figuring things out. Yeah, Roadrunner. Roadrunner was smart, uh, resilient. The Flintstones, because it was just such a family. Super Friends, because of teamwork to defeat a common foe. Jetsons, Transformers. <laughs> Somebody said they watch. NCIS New, New Orleans on Saturday morning. Not a car, she, they're not a cartoon person. <laughs> All right, Dr. Richards. <laughs> she called your name. I did not. <laughs> G.I. Joe, because it was an action. Jetsons, futuristic, things to come. So it sounds like, it looks like everybody, we kind of reached a, a um, place where everybody's gotten an opportunity to share. And I can just say that just the majority of these cartoons, I think I've seen in some form or fashion, whether it was Saturday morning or after school, um, or, you know, um, at some point during the day that cartoons were shown. So again, thank you for sharing in that, because I think that it kind of shows, you know, we can, we can kind of, cartoons kind of took us away. 
Um, sometimes it was it was a learning experience, of course, in some cases, but it was an opportunity to kind of take off the week and to kind of just relax if you got a chance to enjoy um, whatever you did on a Saturday morning. And, and in the case of Dr. Richard, um, and I can totally see that um, in CIS New Orleans on Saturday morning. So um, I can totally see that. So again, whatever it was that was able to kind of take you away um, from the just the, the whole stress or the, the work of the week. I think that that was the purpose that cartoons served. And in some cases, if you watched ABC, you got to see conjunction, junction, what's your function? You got to hear um, how you became a bill. And so while those were commercials between cartoons, there were also those opportunities to learn. So again, just wanted something light, something fun to kind of help you reflect or think back on, on times that may have been a little bit easier and simpler as we kind of step into the conversation for today. So um, with that said, um, thank you so much, Ms. Patterson, for, for monitoring um, and sharing out from the chat. We so um, totally appreciate that. And with that said, we're going to just kind of jump into um, just the overall um, you know, piece that we always share as we think about um, the work that we push forward or push out from the Department of Education, especially from the Office of School Improvement. Um, it's really always important to take us back to the why behind what we do and how we do it. And, and I think nothing does that more than the vision and the mission. If we're always able to bring it back to what our ultimate goal is, I think it helps to keep us between um, the lines as we're driving down the highway. So again, um, it's really always to create this, this um, in educational system that is gonna make sure or that's gonna lead to our children um, that go through our system being successful, but it goes beyond them being successful in grades pre-K to 12, but if they step into college and career, as they step into college and career and even into parenthood or citizen, um, citizenry, we want them to be the very best individuals that they can be. And um, we have a hand in that. And of course, all of that happens by way of carrying forward our mission and our, our as we develop policy and, and, and try to um, have systems in place that, that allow this vision to become a reality for, for our state and for our children. So again, I just wanna thank you for just taking the time. I really do hope you enjoy today as we think about the goals that we have set forth. And so when we look at the vision and mission, you know that we have all of these goals and all of our goals, for the most part, lend itself, you can think about the language, lends itself to um, equity, lends itself to trying to make sure that we meet all of the needs that are aligned to all students being proficient, um, having high quality teachers and leaders in our buildings, creating these pieces that, that allow us to have the data in place so that quality decisions can be made. You know, I say this all the time and I truly, truly believe that. School, in, school improvement happens by way of goals one through five occurring in, 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 a, in a systematic way in our schools and in our system. So as we, as we think about um, moving forward in, into um, today, just know that even though we talk about school improvement, we're talking about CSI and we're talking about all of those things that help us to get to this place to where we can create conditions in our school that are gonna lead to all of the people that are in our schools from students to the adults being successful. So um, as I step into the um, purpose for today or as we get ready to um, step into um, our overall purpose, and I think we are on the next slide. Yes, yeah. It's really an opportunity for us to kind of have our network explore our vision and practicing practices for implementing high school redesign. We want to learn from each other. We want to um, think about, you know, and talk about not only great things that are happening, because I know that some of you are moving forward in really strong and, and positive ways, but also those challenges that occur. And so um, we don't want to be afraid of the challenges. We want the opportunity, we want the challenges to also be our, our roadmap as we kind of look at opportunities for, for um, overcoming whatever challenges or obstacles we currently see, or maybe even forecast 
down the road. So again, I just want to um, step into this whole notion of having this group come together and being able to engage with one another in the way that I hope we are able to engage today. And so again, we have a couple of breakout activities laid out for you, and we have our um, have our um, landscape analyses that you're going to be sharing. And so as you look at the agenda, you can kind of see that um, we have, for the most part, the same agenda that was laid out in the draft. You can kind of see where you fall as it relates to sharing out, and you can kind of see how we kind of broken that up by bringing in a couple of breakout sessions to kind of um, have some conversations or some deeper conversations with you about a couple of things as we reviewed and looked at your landscape analysis. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Linda. She's going to talk about the norms for the session, and I think we're, we're going to be good um, to move forward. Thank you. Good morning and welcome, everyone. So excited to be here and to be um, with you today. Um, we have some norms to help us as a, a, a large and collaborative group for our session today. And they're pretty much the norms that we have been following all along as a network. Um, obviously now that we're virtual, um, they've shifted a little bit. So the two that I'll point out because they're a little different is it is hard to be on screen and it's also helpful. So we're asking as you can, as much as you can, if you can keep your video on, just to help with engagement and um, trust building, and especially if you can keep your um, video on in the breakouts. To help with background noise, we're keeping our mics on silent when we're not speaking. However, when you go into your breakout rooms, again, if you could take your mic off silent, because those are actually um, replicating what would be the in-person um, spaces um, if we were in person. Um, at this moment, I'd like to just tell you that the, the Everyone Graduates team is here. Um, and so that's Hannah is here and she's going to be um, zooming us in and out of rooms. So we're going to give her our um, appreciation for that. Amanda is keeping us back and forth with hyperlinks to keep this interactive. Uh, Maria is here and is going to be um, putting things in and out of the chats. And um, our center director, Bob Balfance, is with us this morning. And at this moment, we're just gonna ask Bob if he has any framing words before we move forward. Uh, thanks, Linda, and welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for sharing your time and energy this morning. Uh, I think the way to, to think about today really came from, I believe, a, a Mississippi uh, high school principal on one of our uh, earlier uh, cross-state high school redesign forums. And he said, you know, we just have to say it that no one has this all figured out. Uh, and the only way forward is to learn and share together. And that's what we're going to do today. So thank you for being here. Thanks, Bob. Next slide. OK, so in order for uh, Hannah to get us in the right spaces for the two breakouts, we have made up these codes. And what we're asking you, if you wouldn't mind, is if you will rename yourself. So in order to rename yourself, you, you kind of hover over your own name in the participant list. And depending on what version of Zoom you have, it'll either just offer you rename right there, or you might have to click on three dots or click on more, and then it will let you rename. And so what we're asking you to do is to put your school code and your role code and then re-enter your name. So. Um, for example, if you looked at Michael McDonald's right now, he has LL4 Michael McDonald, okay? And that is to denote that he will be with Leak County and his role is state district leadership, okay? If anybody is having um, a, a good, great question, AP should put two, unless you wanna put three. Like Bob said, who knows, right? No, <laughs> it's, it's, it's your call. Um, so we're asking everyone if they wouldn't mind renaming. And if you have any trouble at all with that, please just enter your questions in the chat. And we have, like I said, our whole team is here and we'll be happy to help. And um, now we're gonna go to the next slide, please, Amanda. Okay, 
in order for us to learn together in the um, sharings that are happening, we've created a feedback sheet for each school presentation. So Maria is going to put in the chat right now the link to the Google Drive folder that has all of those sheets. There's one sheet, it's Amanda showing us now, there's one sheet for each school. So if you click open, um, you can pick any one you like, Amanda, great. And then you're gonna need to open with Google Docs so that you can type in it. It's loading, it takes just a second. The whole world is on Google Docs now. And that's so that we can be collaboratively typing at the same time, okay? So please know you can have that sheet open if you like while the school's presentation is going on. And also know that we're gonna take about a 90 second pause at the end of each um, presentation for people who would like to fill it out then. But that feedback is um, so an integral part of today's convening. So we just welcome you to please participate in that process. And without further ado, we're gonna actually go back to our slide deck. And we are going to begin with Wingfield. Each of the presentations are gonna be three to five minutes. And as I said, then we'll do about a 90 second pause for people who wanna finish their thought on the feedback document. Um, Amanda, as you go through each of the schools, you'll be able to kind of quickly pass the school name and purpose because that's gonna be the same in each one. And their focus is really gonna be on the last three slides in their decks. So without further ado, I invite Wingfield to unmute and take it away. Principal Smith, are, we're having a little trouble hearing you. Can you hear me now? Uh-huh, thank you. Give me a thumbs up. All right, good deal, good deal. Great morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I'm Roger Smith, head principal at Wingfield High School. I also have on the line with me uh, my assistant principal, Coach Gatlin, so he may uh, jump in and chime in at any time. Uh, you can go on to the next slide. Uh, and I guess on to the next slide. All right, so uh, when it came down to identifying a couple of our uh, visions or goals, we decided to pick on the ones that we focused on most. and. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of give you a rundown of them. Uh, for organizing adults, we started out on a 100 minute block schedule, AB block schedule. We decided to change that to an A period day. Uh, we wanted to be able to increase the amount of teachers that offer dual enrollment uh, courses as well. So the first things we need to change were, of course, the bell schedule. And then more importantly, how we could adjust uh, the teaching model from that 100 minutes to 49 minutes. And of course, uh, it was a challenge in the beginning with teachers uh, feeling like they didn't have enough time to cover all the materials in the one that they would normally cover in 100 minutes to getting it down to just 49. Uh, but after about the first four to five weeks of school, we were able to start to uh, get in classrooms and help those two teachers who were having trouble with managing that uh, time. Uh, so uh, eventually they were able to get in all the instruction that they needed as well as seeing those students every day. Uh, and it actually overall teachers enjoyed it better, the students enjoyed it better because uh, the, the students really appreciated it more because they uh, didn't have to sit in class that entire time with a lot of time for fluff. Um, 
and the remote learning our landscape this year with COVID-19, we went back to an AB block schedule. However, we did cut the uh, AB block down from 100 minutes to 85 minutes, of which 60 minutes would be for synchronous time uh, with the students face to face, and the other 25 minutes would be with the students uh, virtually, where they can go in and complete any assignments that may have been covered during the uh, 60 minutes of synchronous time. Moving on to students at the center, uh, we focused on the goals of uh, af offering after school tutorials as well as summer bridge for incoming freshmen. Um, the things that need to happen uh, for the after school students need to be able to return back. Uh, the leadership team played around with the idea of offering after school tutorial virtually, but decided since students were already struggling with the online uh, component as far as wanting to sit in front of the screen so much and having so much screen time, we just decided that we'll wait until we return back. Uh, and by the way, we are 100% virtual uh, this semester. So the only time we really have interaction with the students is when we bring them in for uh, testing and, that, and that's uh, mapped out so that we have very few students in the building at the, at the same time, or if we have an exceptional day, a student who needs uh, some face-to-face -face contact uh, with their, uh, and those are our severe uh, needs students. So we do have them coming into building uh, from time to time uh, when needed. And the remote learning landscape, uh, we were actually able to have our summer bridge program last year virtually. So we kind of used that as a way to test out how we would start this school year in the event that we may have to uh, go virtual. Uh, so that was a, a little uh, experiment. Oh, and I see that I'm, I'm about to run out of time. So uh, teaching and learning, continuous professional development, uh, that has been a little easier since uh, most of the PDs now are virtual, so we're able to have teachers uh, enrolling in more PDs since they don't have to actually travel to get to them and they can do it from the comfort of their homes or their uh, classrooms. And then post-secondary pathways, enrolling students in dual credit classes. Uh, we offer more dual enrollment classes this year and uh, last year than we have in the past. Uh, so. Our goal is to offer dual credit, at least two dual credit classes for every junior senior but before they graduate. Next slide. Okay. Uh, ways that we convene with our students and uh, all of our key stakeholders, organizing adults. Uh, every day we have two daily huddles, one in the morning, one in the afternoon with our staff. We also I have bi-monthly parent meetings uh, and community meetings, as well as robocalls and uh, newsletters. Uh, everyone receives the newsletters, uh, as well as the robocalls. We have had more parents complaining about too many robocalls, but at this point, that's mainly the, the key uh, source of reaching out to parents and uh, community members. Uh, same thing with students at the center. Uh, only difference, we have our grade level meetings uh, bi-monthly teaching and learning. Uh, everyone, again, we're 100% virtual, so everyone is using conferences in Canvas, and we do have a daily uh, remediation schedule. And then uh, our dual credit pathways, We each uh, student is enrolled in dual credit. It is virtual this year. And uh, we have our get to college meetings uh, monthly as well. And then uh, the way we used our funds, uh, organizing adults mainly went toward professional development uh, and salaries for our after school and boost programs. Uh, and our outcome, of course, we wanted higher graduation rate and higher quality instruction. Uh, with students at the center, we spent a lot of money on technology, uh, dual credit and AP. Uh, and again, we want to increase our AP scores, get more students enrolled or accepted into college uh, and the ability for them to be able to work uh, virtually. 
teaching, uh, teaching and learning, again, professional development and salaries, and then the pathways. Uh, we provided ACT uh, uh, resources for ACT and fee, re fee refunds for a ACT, as well as dual credit uh, tuition. And again, we want more students to be able to apply for college and get accepted, as well as increase our graduation rate. And uh, that's it. I hope I got it in under those uh, five minutes. Thank you so much, Principal Smith. We are going to take a pause now so everyone can open the Wingfield document in your Google Doc and you will have the opportunity to put in your thoughts or comments or insights or feedback. And if you wouldn't mind, include your name and contact information so that we can all learn as a network. Can someone rescind the link to uh, access the Google Docs? I do not see it in the chat box. Something went on with my, okay, thank you. I see it, thank you. And um, Dr. Bradley, I think if you open it as a Google Doc, you should be able to type in it. Okay, I did, I'll try it again. I think it's that on the top where it says open as Google Doc, you have to open it as a Google Doc. Now, this doesn't mean I'm right. This just no. means I, I think that might do it. I did that. I'm going to try again. Thank you so much. Linda, I'm also having uh, issues. Edit. I'm not able to edit the document either. Yeah, I believe that. It's asking me for access to request access to edit. I am so sorry, everyone. I am gonna try to fix this glitch. If you will just note your thoughts for Principal Smith and his team on paper while I try to fix it, we'll move into our next presentation. And my greatest apologies. I believe it is our turn, Blue Mountain High School. Good morning, everybody. Morning. So I want to start off by saying that we ended up in school improvement mostly because of our graduation rate. So a lot of the, the goals that we focused on were tied to those priority indicators for graduation rate. Uh, I'm going to start with organizing adults. Um, one of the goals that we pulled out from our uh, narrative was creating structured time for tutoring and career planning and club activities. So what needed to happen was we needed to make changes to our master schedule. Um, we did adjust our bell schedule. We are on a traditional block but we, we were able to build in a 25 minute mentoring block so that every kid is tied to an adult, a small group setting where they can focus on different things, whether it be uh, remediation or whether it be completing grant applications or FAFSA or uh, just being an adult that you know, a kid can talk to if they need something. Um, we, are, we have struggled a little bit with this as far as uh, distance learning. So we're wondering, we're wondering how to um, effectively engage our distance learners during this time. Currently, like I said, the distance learners do not log in for our mentoring sessions. We are pretty much traditional. Um, we only have 17 distance learners, so it hasn't been, I guess, that big of an issue so far. Uh, we've looked at ways to convene these small group uh, meetings virtually using Google Meet or Zoom. Um, in discussing this, as far as who do we need at the table, we, of course, the teachers, the students, administration, uh, even parents, because they need to make sure that their kids are engaging fully at home. Um, how were the funds, funds used? We did have uh, money spent on a graduation coach. We do have, have two mentors who were hired who helped uh, build curriculum for our mentoring time. Um, known outcomes. Well, we feel like most of our goals have been met, except um, as far as organizing adults, except for a standard process for credit recovery. And we are looking at ways to do a better job with credit recovery. Um, that pretty much sums up our, our goal for 
building that, I guess, a resource for our kids so that we can make sure that they're ready for whatever happens after high school and to get them graduated on time. Uh, I have our graduation coach with us today, Mr. Knight. He's gonna talk to you about students at the center. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I, like Mr. Gates said, I am going to mute your talk to you. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you. Mute <laughs> um, your, your mic. What about your volume? Are you connected by phone and by computer? There, okay, there we go. Um, so I'm in, I'm going to talk to you guys about the students at the center. Um, so our vision and goals was that we we would like to uh, increase student voice by including student representation on our school committees and our P16 council. Um, what needed to happen for that to be a success was we selected two students that are currently on our school-wide P16 council, um, and we're looking to add a student rep to our school leadership team. We currently have a senior and a freshman on our P16 council. Um, our, under remote learning landscape and wonderings, we're wondering if we should offer a workshop for our parents on how to use uh, Google Suite so that um, parents can get a better understanding of what their child is using at school um, and in bringing in the community that way. Um, ways that we convene our groups, like Mr. Gates said, we do only have 17 distance learners. Um, the way that they enroll in class or the way that they participate in their classes is through Google Meet. Um, and we, for uh, who do we need at the table? We need students, teachers, and our community members all to be on board with this so that our students can be successful. Um, how were our funds used? Like Mr. Gates said, um, we have hired um, some mentors. Uh, we also have a graduation coach, um, which is me. Um, um, our mentors are incredibly motivated. They're fired up to help our students uh, have a voice and help show them post-graduation options. Because we're a smaller school, um, those graduation, I'm, I'm sorry, those mentors um, can spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with um, each of our students. Um, we did uh, field trips last year. We did local and state college campus and local career fair and industry tours. Of course, um, COVID kind of put a halt to all that. Um, our known outcomes, we have had great student presence on our committees. Our student morale is high. Um, we had trips to college campuses and local industries. And we, um, Mr. G as Mr. Gates also said, we have implemented a club day during that mentor time, and we have seen increased attendance on our uh, club days as well. Um, and that is all I have for you guys. Um, thank you very much. Thank okay, you. My name is Brent Grissom, and I'm going to at Blue Mountain High School, and I'm going to go through our teaching and learning um, portion. Since we're in this basically for a graduation rate, um, we decided to focus our teaching and learning on some of our, one of our weakest areas on our um, achievement scores. And so our goal is to increase student achievement as evidenced by increased test scores, especially in science. So we're, we have a big focus on science in this one. So what needs to happen and what has happened, we have shifted teachers around so we could hire a new biology teacher and we actually are using a different science teacher for eighth grade this year. Now we are currently working towards creating a STEM lab for grades three through six and improving our current science lab for seven through 12, which is in need of a big bolster. We're also looking to purchase STEM scopes to bolster science curriculum in grades fifth through eighth to provide more hands-on activities um, for students to better understand the information. Now, our remote learning landscape and wonderings, our biggest issue was how do you engage distance learners in hands-on lab activities? Um, we're sort of struggling with that answer at this moment. Um, our ways that we decided to convene groups, um, we're just really not sure yet. Um, we're looking for ideas and how to make sure our distance learners are receiving as much of the same instruction as the regular students in, in who are in class each day. Um, who in, do we need to bring to the table to this. We've got to get all teachers involved, of course, bringing in our students, especially our distance learners, and um, of course, administration as well. Now, we have not spent any, fun, spent any funds on this area because we were able to move teachers around. Um, as far as our known outcomes, we're going to have more data, of course, after this year's state testing, but so far, our common assessment 
assessment data shows that we have a projection for much higher scores or higher proficiency scores in eighth grade science and biology than many of our previous years. So we see we're on the right track. Okay, so I'm Cheryl Bass, and I'm going to be talking about post-secondary pathways. I'm the school counselor, um, so I work closely um, with that. Um, but, you know, like Mr. Um, Grisham said, you know, graduation rate has been one of our, that was why we were in school improvement. So um, we are working on getting those students graduated and, you know, just going on after um, high school. So our vision for that is um, to use our early warning system more effectively as a means for identifying at-risk students and assigning those students to a dedicated mentor. Um, and that mentor does meet with them and really focuses on their, um, their goals for the future. Um, and current goals also. And then what needs to happen currently, we are implementing this plan to track and monitor our at-risk students. Um, as far as um, the things that we're wondering about remote, um, like learning, um, how we're gonna provide equitable mentoring services to students who are distance learners and also at risk for not graduating on time. Um, so we're still, um, it's just a, an ongoing process for the distance learners. Um, ways to convene the group, possibly bring them on campus for one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions or through scheduled Google Meets. Um, this summer I did meet personally with every high school student um, and their parents just one-on-one, -on -one, um, which was good, but we need more um, time for them to come in. Um, and then the people who need to come to the table are the mentors, um, our parents, our um, early warning system committee, and then those at-risk students. We, um, the funds, um, we are using to pay the mentors um, that, that we have, have chosen. Um, and we have some fantastic mentors um, who are retired um, and know a lot, um, a lot of um, things that are helping these students. Um, the outcomes, um, we want to increase the number of students staying on track for graduation. Um, the significant increase in um, graduation rate and students enrolling in community colleges. Um, most recent graduation rate is 86.7%. Um, and possibly this year, um, if everything goes like we're um, hoping, um, it could be over 95% for this next coming school year. So we're super um, excited about that. And everybody's working really hard to make that happen. Right. And that sums up Blue Mountain's presentation. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Gates. Thank you to Team Blue Mountain. We're so going to again give a pause. I updated a link. It looks like I have to do it document by document. So somebody put in the chat that Wingfield was now editable and now Blue Mountain is editable. So I will keep working on that and we'll take that 90 second pause and hopefully folks can put their thoughts in those two documents.
apologies everyone for our technology glitches. Uh, we're gonna keep on keeping on. I'll keep putting links in. I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's only allowing me to do it one document at a time. I can't make the uh, folder editable. So just keep looking for the links. And if that is um, not useful for you, if any notes that you take for feedback for each school, at the end, you can email to me and I'll be happy to curate them for the schools. All right, so now we're moving forward and our next up is Coahoma uh, High School, Junior and Senior High School. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, so I missed the first part of the meeting because our class has started at nine, so I do apologize for that. So I do, are we just presenting the, um, are we just presenting what's on the, on the slideshow? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, so um, as far as organizing the adults, um, our vision and goal was smaller class sizes, distributed leadership and, and the school schedule. And so one of the things that we realized that needed to happen, especially with um, COVID-19 being here is that we would have to reduce class sizes um, and make changes to the um, school schedule to accommodate social distancing. And the leadership should be expanded and distributed. Um, some of the concerns from um, the parents were just, um, there was a community survey, uh, survey done this summer to plan the distance. Well, it asked if there was one done this summer. And so we did do um, a survey. I'm lost. Hold on one minute, you guys. So Ms. Jackson, if you'll just give us a summary of what's on your slide or on your presentation. Um. So um, and students at the center, we are talking about the, um, the student council and the advisory committee, um, just trying to figure out ways to get students more involved um, with our teacher and learning. Um, we are looking to provide more ongoing professional development. Um, and that professional development um, includes um, different teaching styles, breaking down the lesson plans for what an introduction looks like, what does a guided practice look like, what does independent practice looks like, um, and as far as our post-secondary um, pathways, um, you know, MDE has identified different pathways for students to graduate. So we are working on um, getting those um, rising, our current ninth graders, getting them to choose their graduation options and everything. Um, we've also um, started our own CTE program here on campus, um, where last year we did a partnership with another local school district, but um, we're still doing their partnership with them, but we've also started our own program here and we have four classes um, that we are offering for our um, CTE program. Next, uh, next slide, please. So um, this just talked about ways that we would convene the groups. Um, parents have been doing a really good job of participating in on the meetings um, when we do the Google Meet links. Um, they've been participating in, in those. We just have to do them at a time that's convenient for parents, which is later on in the evenings. Um, as far as the students, we have begun phasing students back onto campus. And so that's why I'm kind of a little late today. Today was our 10th through 12th graders. Um, they, they were on virtual learning. They phased back into school today. So now we currently have all of our 7th through 12th graders in a hybrid model here on campus where they are coming to classes on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Um, and we only have um, a handful of students who um, were allowed to remain virtual due to medical concerns. Um, it's not more than 10 students um, that were allowed to remain virtual. So um, as far as the teaching and learning, um, we, are, we, we, are, we are finding with, our, um, with the way that we start school, um, breakfast doesn't start until 8.30, so classes don't start until 9.00. Teachers have to be on campus at 745. So we have a window of time in the morning when they arrive before students get here. And then students are dismissed at 230 and teachers have to remain on campus until 345. So that gives us ample amount of time in the evening times to um, conduct those PLCs and plan with teachers. Um, and it also allows teachers to collaborate with each other. Next slide, please. 
Okay, as far as our funds, um, we have been offering additional stipends for professional development as needed. Um, we do have some money reserved for extended learning opportunities, which we were supposed to have this previous summer, but we were able to do some form of that, but not an on-site one due to COVID. Um, as far as the um, teaching and learning, once again, that's um, offering the additional stipends for professional development. And um, our post-secondary pathways, um, dual enrollment courses and our AP courses. Um, we use funds to purchase it because we use a program for our AP courses currently right now. And then we do pay for our students to participate in dual enrollment courses. Is there another slide? I think that's, was that the last one? Next slide. Oh, okay. That was it. All righty. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Jackson. That was your final slide. You're good. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and thanks for your patience. We're going to try one more pause. We've had a few brave souls test, and they assure me that these things are now editable. <laughs> so if you wouldn't mind, you can put your comments um, for Coahoma on the document. And in about one minute, we will uh, go to Philadelphia High School. As we're finishing up our thoughts, we're going to invite Philadelphia High School to share. Good morning. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you so much. Okay. <clears throat> our goals, well, first of all, our school is a 7 through 12 school, and we currently have 22 students out of 393 that are virtual. And our goals were all suburbs will obtain, obtain a 70% proficiency by 2024-25 in ELA and math. Now subgroups will have 90% graduation rate by 2024 through 25. <laughs> Organizing adults, what we need, what needs to happen, teacher ADA improved, proper planning and execution of plans, rental involvement and community support. Remote learning, landscape and wandering, rental education of technology, all embrace technology and student held, account, held accountable. The one area that we've really concentrated on is, is making the attempt to educate our parents on how to use technology for those that are virtual students, as well as for our teachers and our students that are here. We've had many students to go on quarantine, so students are in and out using virtual. And so the education of our faculty and our students and, and parents on technology is one area that we've concentrated on. 
student at the center, reduce ab absenteeisms and tardies, student accountability of le for learning, trust the teacher and the process, remote learning landscape and wandering, accountability for attending virtual classes, engage understanding. Teaching and learning, teacher readiness, teacher collaboration, teacher and student attendance, professional development, interactive lessons and virtual field trips to provide exposures and hand-on experience. Remote learning landscape, tech training, resources such as Canvas, Google Classroom and laptops, et cetera and communication. Post-secondary pathways, dual credit. We offer six dual credit classes. AP, we offer four. Dual enrollment, college career and readiness courses. ACT preparation, job training and exposure remote learning, virtual college visits, distance learning, learning management systems. Organizing adults on the next slide, PL16 groups, PTOs, parent universities, Lunch and learn, and that's an area where our counselor monthly, she engages our parents at 12 o'clock and invite parents in and, and she pro will provide some type of topic that's, that's dealing with this to help our students. Who do we need at the table? Parents, community leaders, stakeholders, educational representatives. Students at the center, ways to con convene groups, student council, jump start, small group forums. Who do we need at the table? Students, parents, influencers, trusted agents. Teaching and learning, ways to convene groups, PLCs, professional development, mentors. Who do we need at the table? Consultants teachers, administrators. Post-secondary pathways, college and career days, guest speakers, field trips, career technical centers, job shadowing programs. And who do we need at the table? College admission personnel, guest speakers, students and parents, ask for reps, business leaders, local and national. Thank you so much, and, Philadelphia. Okay, what about the, okay. Yeah, if you can, <laughs> please address the funding. Okay, Just and how will the fund? Okay, organizing adults, consultants for administrators, teacher coaching and students at the center, consultants, tutors for students in tested areas and teaching and learning after school tutors and supplies and summer school tutors and supplies. Post-secondary pathways, fees for AP assessments and ACT boot camps. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And as you guys are kind of capturing your thoughts um, about what Philadelphia has shared, um, Bob's going to share some thoughts with us about silver linings and opportunities. Bob? Uh, thanks, Linda. Yeah, and as after folks get a chance to give their comments uh, to Philadelphia, 
um, we're going to convene uh, in some role alike breakout groups to give you a chance to share and talk with other folks in other schools um, doing jobs similar to what you do uh, to get a, give you a chance to hear and learn from each other. And what we're aiming to do in that is to really think about this question that, you know, COVID-19 has been very disruptive um, on many levels. Um, but sometimes disruption provides opportunity. Um, and and, and as this sort of uh, diagram shows that, you know, in many fields, there is a, a, a normal way of doing things or the customary way, and then there's a disruption. And then that leads to a, to a, a new and different way of, of doing things. And so the, the question for, for us in high school redesign and education more broadly are, you know, what, what are some of the opportunities that the disruption of COVID might have provided us um, either as a learning or as an opportunity? Um, a number were mentioned, folks talked about the, you know, it sort of uh, heightened the need for distributive leadership. Um, it certainly increased people's awareness of the strengths and challenges of technology. Um, in many cases, it expanded the access to technology. Um, other people have noted in some you know, unpredictable ways, it actually freed up time for teacher professional development um, and or access to it in a virtual way that led to higher participation. So we're really gonna ask you um, just to share what you've seen and what you've learned about how uh, the struggles of COVID, uh, a silver lining may have been or may be that it provided opportunity for innovation or fast forwarding um, elements of your high school redesign. So that's sort of the, the gist where we want uh, people to share and discuss uh, in, their, in their breakouts. And we'll also be providing um, some tools, I think, to help with that. We sure are, Bob, and let's hope these tools work. Okay, so Amanda, we're gonna go to the next slide. When you go to this link, you are gonna see some jam boards and Amanda, are you going to open up that link so we can see what you will see? Okay. So Dr. Robertson has done an amazing job of creating some jam boards for role alike breakout and some jam boards for school team time. And so as Bob mentioned, when you get into your breakout rooms, you're going to be with folks who have similar roles and then you are going to have a jam board. Now there's a couple of breakout rooms that have more than or to, uh, roles that have more than one um, breakout. So if a board is already being used, you'll just be able to go to the next board. So you see here, we have two for teachers and I believe we have two for a few other things. And the arrow at the top allows you to pick the jam board that you are going to be um, capturing thoughts on. And in order to capture your thoughts, Amanda, could you go over on the side and show us how do we get a sticky note? Beautiful, and can I make it any color I want? Beautiful, and can I make it any size I want? Awesome. So what we are going to do is in just a, about 30 seconds, you're gonna get an invitation on your screen that's gonna send you to a breakout room and you are gonna find the jam board that matches the folks in your room, your role, and you're gonna have a conversation. We're gonna go back to the uh, PowerPoint for just a second, if you don't mind, Amanda. Maria, it put the Jamboard link in the chat. Next slide, please. And you're just, the important thing here is it's all about connecting and networking, okay? So please make sure everybody gets to introduce their self. And then as Bob said, we're just going to talk a little bit about COVID and your redesign plan and innovations that might be happening. And any thoughts or insights that might come up in your conversation, please feel free to capture on the Jamboard with sticky notes. Okay, so soon you will see an invitation from Hannah to join a breakout. Yeah, you should be seeing that invitation on your screen right now. So you can just click accept and you'll be teleported away. Thank you, Hannah.
Everyone should be back in about 10 seconds, just so you know. Thank you, Hannah. Great job. Awesome. And I'm, gonna, I, I'm pushing I, through to there. I think everyone's back. And we would just, if there are maybe three comments, anybody might want to a sentence or a gist from the experience that you just like to say um, to the whole group, please unmute yourself and go for it. Okay. So I'll Any share from the state district leadership group real quick, just so we could get some, um, some language, some engagement going. Um, so the first jam board that says, how has redesigned your redesign allowed for connection and support in remote environments? Um, again, acknowledging that rural, in, rural environments are tough or rural settings are tough. And then just this move for trying to, to, to try to implement more of a one-to-one -one, um, approach um, and, and being able to support, support students in that, that rural, those rural settings. And so a um, lot of them would love to have one-to-one -one access but it's just really tough at this at this point, even with the supplemental funding that they have. Thank you so much. Is there a comment that might have resonated with the teacher group? I have a comment, but it's not from the teachers group. It's from the side of the administrators. One of the things that, that I noticed is that we have so many different people that are doing so many different things. And that, you know, and I think we're all supposed to have the same kind of outcome, of course, when it comes to the, the assessments that'll be given, of course, in the spring. And I look at JPS that we just talked a few moments ago, and they haven't seen kids, kids since March. I haven't seen one third of my kids since um, since March also. And it just seems, and you know, we had some some situations like with Blue Mountain, of course, and they only have 17 that's out in virtual, 17 or so that's out in virtual. It's just, it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, you know, it, it makes you makes you a little apprehensive, uh, you know, you know, with with everything that's coming up, of course, in the spring. And see, our kids, I don't know about anybody else, but our kids won't even be back on campus. The virtual kids won't even have the opportunity to be back on campus until at least January, January 6. So it seems we just, we're all gonna be, gonna be assessed the same, but we, 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 know, we all don't have the same approach. And that's problematic for us. Thank you for um, making that visible, Principal Anderson. Um, and that's, I think, part of what all of our intentions are today, right? Is how might we make what is visible in the hopes that we understand that what is is new territory and how we respond to it can't be how we've responded in the past. Those Jamboards will continue to be available for the Roll Alike group should you want to continue uh, an interaction. At this point, we're going to um, move to uh, our next round of pre school presentations. And Maria has again put in the chat um, the documents that fingers crossed are working. And next up, we will hear from Lanier High School. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dallin Bradley. I'm from Lanier High School. Um, in our slides, just like everybody else, we're organizing adults. Uh, we're looking to become a middle college site. Uh, and we're looking to go from a fixed mindset to one that's evidence-based and that shows growth. <clears throat> what needs to happen, um, we are moving from isolated classroom to integrated approach. So it's no longer just me on the island by myself. Uh, we are... Um, delving into interdisciplinary planning as well. We are currently uh, doing something called Refocus Wednesdays high school-wide in our um, district. 
and the interdisciplinary unit that we chose was um, right into our congressman or congresswoman or person in the Senate or in the House. And the math people involved, was they're looking at the numbers in the census and um, with the electoral college and the uh, English and social studies people are looking to see what kind of uh, votes those people had and how they voted. Uh, so the end product will be a letter to the congressperson for your area. And so teachers are working with students on that. We have a rubric. So we kind of gotten everybody involved. Uh, everybody kind of had some input on how they should look. Even the science people talked about uh, the impact of COVID-19 and what difference that would make with the issue that you want to write about in your letter. So we're looking at doing that. Um, we are trying to start a pharmacy program in uh, fall of 2021. We're partnering with uh, a local college to help get that done. In our remote learning, uh, we use Google Meet uh, for the video conferencing tool and Canvas for the learning management system and then school-wide. Students at the center, uh, we want students to be able to advocate for themselves rather than everybody else advocating for you. We do want to advocate for them, but I think you really have it going on when students can advocate for themselves and they know what's best for them and they can tell you what they need to do and they can articulate their plan. So instead of everybody else planning for students, we want them to be able to be involved in their plan to tell us what they need. Um, what needs to happen, looking at data, of course, we have to look at it for accountability and uh, improvement, but we have to look at it for more than that. Um, moving from punitive practices to restorative practices. And we need all adults to move from I'm not your counselor attitude to how can I help you solve the problem. Uh, and we need all of our students to have an electronic device, even when they come back to school. Because we don't plan on going back to the paper and, pencil, paper and school as usual. So we do plan to keep up a lot of the things that we're doing virtually, but face to face. And we are virtual right now, 100% in our district. Our students do come back in January. So we're planning for that. And uh, I guess we'll be on a hybrid uh, schedule when they come back. So that's every other day. Teaching and learning, um, again, our vision is to have 100% students in a classroom. And of course, with you being virtual, uh, it looks a little bit different than it would face to face, but we're looking to have SEL embedded in each class, if that's just the way that you do business. Uh, we're looking to move from assessments of learning to assessments for learning. We don't wanna have a one size fit all class. We wanna have autonomy and choice. And we wanna truly group students into one or three groups prevention, intervention, and enrichment, because our students need something different. Uh, I was the one that put in this first because they embrace uh, all, and so we want to do that. Uh, and we need all of our teachers to embrace that concept. For our post-secondary uh, pathways, our vision is to provide universal access uh, to and guidance and support for our students and to have them to be either enrolled, enlisted, or employed one to three. You can't just go out on the streets and do nothing. Uh, and we need to move from guidance for some to post-secondary plans and options for all. In other words, you have the option to go to college. Not that you can't go, you have the option. Uh, next slide, please. Ways to uh, convene our groups in terms of adults. Uh, again, we use Google Meet. Uh, we do a huddle once a day uh, in the morning to check in with our staff uh, to give announcements and uh, talk about different things that are uh, important for the day or the week. Uh, who do we need at the table? Principals, assistant principals, department leads, interventionists. Uh, so in other words, all of those stakeholders that are important for that to happen for students. Students at the center, ways to convene again through Google Meet invites. We meet with our grade level students uh, once per month and we let them tell us ways that we can have this, help them so they do have a voice uh, and it's led by the grade level counselor. Uh, who do we need at the table? Principals, counselors, our PBIS chair, teachers, students, assistant principals, and our student leaders. Teaching and learning ways to uh, convene the group again through Google Meet. We model and share best practices. We have our team leads to model and share best practices. Uh, who do we need at the table? Some of those same people. Post-secondary pathways. Um, 
I heard somebody talk about a launch and learn. We have that in a chat and shoot with various uh, department uh, college personnel, recruiters, and other people who can share information about FAFSA. Uh, just recently, we had a high school uh, 12th grade parent night and a 12th grade student night where students got to learn and hear all about college and college requirements and get to college be that for us. The last slide, please. Um, how were funds used? So pretty much for our funds, uh, graduation rate was one of our big things, and of course our scores as well, so that's why we are in school improvement. But for the 1920 school year, we used uh, funds to hire an additional interventionist because we had so many students in the bottom 25 and on tier three, and a graduation coach, of course, to help with our graduation rate. And our uh, graduation coach and our life coach goes out and actually does home visits. And so we are projected to have about a 15% graduation rate increase. So we know that some of what we're doing is working and we do do home visits weekly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Bradley and Lanier team. We're going to take about 60 seconds so folks can add to their feedback form and then I'll, I'll give a signal when we're ready to start with cold water. Okay, next up, we're gonna hear from Coldwater High School. Good morning. My name is Miguel Jones. I'm the principal of Coldwater High School. And one of our visions is goal and goals is Coldwater High School will be rated C or higher this year. Uh, when we look at organizing adults, our goal is staff will work collaboratively to help students grow. What needs to happen is we're gonna fill state tested positions with certified staff. We're gonna utilize all of our teachers to supplement learning. And then we're gonna remediate struggling students. Um, teachers, uh, remote learning landscape and wanderings, teachers are struggling with how to provide remote instruction, especially for students that are struggling. At the students at the center, the vision will be students will be an active part of the learning. Uh, what needs to happen is more student engagement, student involved in their own growth and goals. Um, the wanderings would be some virtual students have not fully participated in online learning, which pre presents difficulties in regards to growth and engagement. When we look at the teaching and learning, uh, the goal or the vision is teachers would use data and research-based strategies to meet students where they are and help them grow. What needs to happen here is teachers provide students with learning strategies, remediation and enrichment provided, utilize of data, productive PLCs. The wanderings, some virtual students have not fully participated in online learning, which presents difficulties in regards to growth and engagement. When we look at our second, post-second uh, dairy pathways, the vision is students will be college and career ready. Uh, what needs to happen, the ACT action plan put in place, utilize the ACT prep classes, increase dual enrollment, college and career counseling. The wanderings with this will be when students struggling with self-motivation in regards to online learning, their desire to pursue extra activities is limited. The next screen, please. Here, when we look at organizing adults, 
how to convene the groups, ways to convene groups, open house, parent teacher meetings, small groups based on needs, kind of like support groups, title committee, leadership team. Who do we need at the table? We need parents, teachers, administrator, leadership committee. Students at the center. Ways to convene groups would be small groups based on needs, kind of like support groups, motivational, large groups. Who do we need at the table? We need students, speakers, teachers, administration. Teaching and learning, ways to convey groups, identify needs, groups, provide small group instruction based on needs. Who do we need at the table? We need students, teachers, administrators, and counselor. When we look at our post-secondary pathways, ways to convene the groups would be small groups based on needs, kind of like support groups, the FISA meetings, college, career fair, signing and celebration day. Who do we need at the table? We need the counselor, ACT prep teacher, parents, teachers, administrators. Next slide, please. Organize, organizing adults, how were funds used to, to provide in-depth and personalized individual teaching training, which entitled a deep dive into the standards during the summer. The known outcomes was the uninterrupted time allowed during the summer provided teachers opportunities to integrate the standards and provide an opportunity for the teachers to connect per, professionally with other teachers and experts in their area. Students at the center, how were funds used? We are striving for student-centered and led instructional process, therefore Chromebooks and interactive boards were purchased. The known outcomes, through observation, we saw the impact of the teacher summer training with the implementation of the use of the purchase technology for student-centered and led instructional process. Teaching and learning, how was funds used? Throughout the school, teachers are provided with job embedded professional development, which targets the individual needs that are assessed through observation and data. The known outcomes, with each job, job embedded professional development session, a work report is submitted through, uh, uh, through analysis of these work reports, we were able to grow our teachers to become more of a facilitator for students, centered and led instructional process. Post-secondary pathways, how were the funds used? We would like to use funds for a variety of pur purposes to support post-secondary pathways, including but not limited to ACT remediation sessions, dual enrollment courses, AP courses, college visits, and et cetera. Known outcomes, the outcome would be identified in the accountability indicators of college and career readiness and acceleration. Thank you. Thanks so much, Cold Water. We're going to take 60 seconds to just uh, finish some thought captures for Cold Water. Okay, and now we're gonna hear from Northside High School. Good morning. I'm Frederick Ford. I am the principal here at Northside High School here in Shelby, uh, Mississippi. To begin, I want to just go over our overall goal, and that is to increase student achievement on our state assessment test and to grow all of our students, especially our bottom 25% of our students. So with that in mind, here are our goals. Number one, to establish effective department heads, leadership practices, uh, promoting teachers as leaders, 
And our expectation for that is, we set expectation for the department head, which is to do desired attitudes, expectation, the desired attitude and expectation and disposition for turnaround teacher leadership. We know if we're going to move our school, it starts with instruction. We ought to clearly define our vision, our mission and beliefs of the school and discuss how our role as department head leaders fit into the school redesign plan. And we also to continue to provide leadership training to the department heads to improve and refine their practices as leaders. And our remote learning and landscape and wondering, the fall semester has allowed multiple opportunities for department heads uh, to convene and to plan due to all uh, virtual scheduling. So we do that on every Friday. Our students at the center uh, to increase student engagement and encourage students voice and redesign school improvement process and what need to happen uh, to determine ways to engage our students in the redesign and improvement process. And so what we're doing is creating surveys and roundtable discussions with students to gather ideas on ways to provide uh, more students inclusive process, create a transparent environment that allows students to have an authentic voice and to create a student leadership position or a team that regularly convenes with our school leadership team and their peers. I've instructed our leadership to our lead teacher to start working on ISGA. Our remote and landscape and wondering, we wonder if students would be interested in being part of the redesign improvement process, willing to trust the process of open dialogue. As it relates to teaching and learning, to improve the instructional quality of the teaching and learning process at Northside High School. What needs to happen? Number one, we need to ensure the instructional staff is receiving relevant, high quality, continuous professional learning that is aligned with the needs of the individual, students, and the organization. MDE has provided ongoing subject area professional learning and coaching sessions for ELA, math, social studies, and science. Number two, to ensure that there are clear expectations for all instructional practices. And number three is to ensure teachers and students have access to high quality learning materials accompanied by appropriate training. In our remote learning landscape and wonderings, are our current remote learning opportunities equitable for all of our students? Our post-secondary pathways, visions and goals, to establish an allied health program that offer degree or certification program in the healthcare field. What needs to happen? Begin to explore possible partnership in the allied health field. We have done that already. We have started the conversation along with our superintendent and our curriculum coordinator on last week with some potential partners. Survey students to determine their specific career interest in the field of allied health or related studies. Determine state course requirements and begin to discuss if the instructional profile for the school needs to be instructed to accommodate course or programs requirement. In our remote learning landscape, and wondering how will the current pandemic impact the hands-on requirements for course fulfillment? Next slide. Organizing adults, ways to convene groups, establish school leadership team meetings with purpose of discussing progress towards school improvement redesign goals, establish book article studies that center around the desired goal for leadership development, and establish a PLC schedule that is led by each department head and centered around the four essential questions for PLCs. Also students at the centers, are what, who need to be at the table, department heads, school leadership team members and administrators. Students at the center, ways to convene groups, create innovative ways for students to provide feedback and have a voice in the redesign process, in-person roundtable discussion or virtual roundtable discussion. Who do we need at the table? Students, parents, school leadership team members, school district administration. Teaching and learning, ways to convene, professional learning data chats, professional learning, community subject area meeting, uh, district PLCs and faculty meetings. And who need to be at the table? Students, parents, SLT members, school administration, dis district administration. Teaching and learning, uh, ways to convene the group, professional learning data chats, professional learning, faculty meeting, P16 council, 
social emotional conference end of the year focus group. Mm -hmm. Who do we need at the table? School district administrators, academic coaches, department head, instructional staff. Post-secondary pathways. Teleconference with potential allied health partners, student interest focus group, social media chat with school counselors, roundtable discussion and staff. And who do we need at the table? The same as the previous slide. Next, as far as uh, funding is concerned, funds was used for the following effort to provide teachers direct instructional support by hiring a lead teacher. The lead teacher has been responsible for providing support to instructional programs to school throughout daily instruction, monitoring teacher development. Known outcomes, instructional staffs are beginning to make instructional and professional improvement based on feedback and support from the lead teacher using the teacher growth rubric. How funds are used as it relates to students at the center to support students with tuitions, course supplies who are part of the dual enrollment program at Cahoma Community College provide training to students and their parents on self-esteem awareness and college and career readiness topics. Our known outcomes, we want to boast a little bit here, have a 100% passing rating for our students in the dual uh, enrollment classes at CCC. How were funds used for teaching and learning? Funds were used for the following, to provide students with access to laptops to complete daily assignments, work on their learning path in Edgenuity, I read it in USA Test Prep. Students can also check out the laptops uh, for overnight class projects to provide professional development to all of our staff. And our known outcome is increased student achievement in our AP courses. Last but not least, funds will be used for the following efforts to provide instructional support to students seeking to meet prerequisite requirements for our allied health program, to provide student tuition and instructional supplies for allied health program, to provide any instructional equipment that might be required to support our allied health curriculum, to provide students with additional instructional support with ex extended today opportunities and mentorships. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. As you guys are capturing some thoughts for Northside, I'm gonna talk you through what's gonna happen next. Cause you may have noticed our time is flying by. I don't know how that happened. So Amanda, would you go to the next um, slide? Okay, what we're gonna do next is a fast five. It didn't used to be called that, but now it is. A fast five Rosebud Thorn. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna go back to the very same jam boards we were on before, but this time we're gonna go to the right side where there are school team jam boards. You're gonna find your school team's jam board. And then on that jam board, you see, oh, Amanda's amazing, isn't she? She's showing us that there's one for each school. And at the top, it has a rose, a bud, and a thorn. And so you're going to say hi to each other if you may not have gotten to say hi to each other yet this morning. And then after that, as a team, just maybe generate one rose, one bud, and one thorn, if you can of what you see after just revisiting the landscape analysis. The rose would be something that you're just re-inspired by, right? The, the beauty and opportunity, wow. The bud may be a potential, just like a bud on a rose, a potential for something that may be just an insight that came to mind. Or thorn, you know, I got picked by a lot of thorns yesterday when I was trimming my roses. A thorn might be something that is, uh, notifying us that there's an opportunity, okay? So rosebud thorn, five minutes in your school design teams. Amanda is gonna fly you there now. I am, and I'm gonna jump in with breakout group uh, 11 because there's a few that I'm not certain where you need to go. So I'll see you guys there.
So I'm thinking we might be the group that is not necessarily connected to the school team, but that can't be right, right? Maybe it's just taking a minute to get everybody to the groups. While we have this moment together, though, our group can certainly feel free to share any roses, buds, or thorns from so far this morning in this Fast Five. Feel free to unmute yourself and share your insights or thoughts. Or if there's anyone in this space that needs to be teleported to a school team space, you could put it in the chat and we will get our air traffic control people to help. Hey, Linda, I got kicked out of that room. No, it's not. Doing? It was intentional. What were you doing? No, what were it you was doing? intentional. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Yeah. Robertson, um, I guess they're going to do a state meeting, oh, state cool. team meeting. Yeah. You know, I'm, at, I'm not at the state anymore. I'm with JPS now. So I know. Oh, what you are left they your doing? Room. It? That's why I was like, I can't find where did go? You <laughs> yeah, left. I got out of there. She told me to get out. You sneaky, sneaky little person. Okay, I go got out of there. <laughs> hey, Dewarski, when you get to wherever they're flying you to, tell her there's only three minutes left. Oh my lord. Okay. Okay. There's only so three minutes left. Three. Exactly. Three. <laughs> so I can stay here with Linda. I'll, I'll I chat with Linda. You. You're there. You oh, you want to go to Linda, right? No, I'm no, fine. No, now now he said there's going to be a state convening, but I told him they're running out of time. Now it's less than three minutes. Yeah, I can stay here with you guys. You can. I just sent you the new invite. My apologies. <laughs> That's okay. And but Linda, I did send you the link to Linda to the uh, growth rubric. Oh. To the teacher oh, growth yeah, rubric. I saw that. I saw that. You know what? I have. I got to tell you the truth. I'm having a little trouble uh, keeping track of everything. I understand. <laughs> but I. That's did okay. That. Thank, thank you for sending that. You're more than welcome. It's a Monday. Yeah. It's more than a notion to this virtual stuff. My heart goes out to every teacher. Yeah, it's a challenge. Jaworski, is everybody in Jackson virtual? Yes. And we're hoping to go back in January. I don't know if we'll go back full time or we'll use some type of hybrid model, but January is the goal. Wow. Yeah. And how are you but, as a state? Are you going up or down? We're going up. We're going up. So that's what I'm concerned about. I, I don't know. Everybody just needs to put on a freaking mask. Jesus, it's not that hard. <laughs> Gosh. You know, what do they say? A thousand points of light. So many different perspectives. It's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. But then I always, I always tell people who kind of give me pushback on that. I, there are a lot of professions that that's the norm for them. My dental hygienist, she wears a mask. My painter that comes to paint my house, he wears a mask. I mean, we can go on and on with the people who wear a mask for our protection and their protection. It's not like it's a foreign thing. It's something that we've always seen. They just, they just um, arrested people in New Jersey. They had a gathering of like 200 people. I guess it was like an underground wave kind of thing. And it's like, okay. you gotta wonder where people put their risks, right? But then I was watching the Ravens and the Eagles in their mm -hmm. theoretically 10% filled stadiums, mm -hmm. which there was no shortage. 
I'm pretty good at math, and it looked more like more than ten percent to me. But of who course, is that safe? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree with you. And I, all we're doing, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. You know, it's just it's making it hard on everybody. Mm -hmm. And the numbers are steadily increasing. So I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know what to do. <laughs> I really don't it's know. Crazy. That's what we can say. COVID is leveling more than the curve of the virus. It is leveling a lot of things. Okay, I know that was fast and we appreciate your indulgence. We have 14 minutes and three school share outs in a closing, so. We still, Linda, you've got about another 30 seconds before everybody's forced back in. Right now we have some that are still in their group. Oh, thank you, Amanda. No problem. <clears throat> now, Amanda? Now everybody should be back, yes. Thank you, Amanda. So that was fast team time. Um, sorry that it wasn't a little bit longer, but great to have a quick taste. We are going to do our next three share outs and I'm going to ask if you wouldn't mind, um, school teams, there's so much valuable information on these and everybody's going to get the whole deck, but if you wouldn't mind maybe trying to give just the gist on each slide, um, so we can honor the, um, time of our end time, I'd be so grateful. So next up is Yazoo City. Good morning. I am Michael Tardy, principal of Yazoo City High School. And we'll just get uh, straight to it. Uh, in order to be successful in a uh, turnaround situation, uh, obviously, the relationship building is, is a must. And so uh, we have uh, various goals. I inherited uh, year two of this uh, CIS uh, cohort. And so what we wanted to do was make certain that we had uh, obtainable goals, make certain that we had something that was realistic so we can have some uh, quick wins. And so we knew we had to look at our master schedule and uh, to make adjustments there to provide our, our teachers with common planning. And what the uh, aim there was to make certain that we built those relationships. So we were looking at uh, content, uh, providing uh, support with content, but we also wanted to um, uh, make our teachers aware that we wasn't coming here to look down upon them or to be in a situation where we thought that they couldn't do the job that was necessary to move our school. So we wanted to have meetings with our teachers as much as possible and get buy-in from them and also provide uh, our expectations and to allow them the opportunity to work side by side with us. And so that's what we wanted to do initially to organize uh, adults. Now with our students, uh, we wanted to take the same approach there and so um, obviously uh, the uh, students are the ones that, that are gonna have to assess. So we felt that they would need a seat at the table. So we organized um, student leadership teams uh, by grade bands. And so we would have them to not only bring us concerns, but bring us some uh, goals and some things that they thought was important that we implement. And so uh, we wanted to provide our school an opportunity to have some students on our superintendents uh, advisory council and superintendents leadership team. So once we met with our student leaders, then we would then um, send them over to our, our superintendents advisory council meetings uh, in order to 
make him aware of what was needed at Yazoo City High School. Now, as far as teaching and learning, um, obviously uh, it's very important that we give our staff and our teachers the proper support and training. And uh, sometimes we are expecting unrealistic things out of our teachers and we hadn't uh, done our part with providing them the proper opportunities in, in terms of training. Now, our post-secondary pathways, uh, obviously when we want to make sure that we don't do a one size fit all like was like what was being done here uh, because we didn't do any assessment uh, with students until they made it to the 10th grade. And I thought that was a uh, disservice to our students. So what we wanted to do was identify early, uh, uh, even with the uh, eighth grade, working with the middle school principal to make sure that we provide our students their graduation option uh, where they would have an opportunity to take advanced placement courses uh, if they fit the bill and to uh, take their assessments a little earlier if they were ready to take those. And so we thought it was very important that we uh, took the student, the student first approach. All right, next slide. Okay, and, and here on convening groups, uh, obviously we're in a virtual uh, situation where it's new for everybody. And so we are 100% virtual uh, other than having our inclusion along with our self-contained students that's here uh, on our campus. And so what we're doing is not necessarily um, saying all bets off because, you, because we're virtual. If we have a situation where we can bring a few in at a time and do some face-to-face, then we have given our teachers that autonomy. And so uh, obviously that is just a tough situation for us all. Next slide. So what we want to do with our funding is provide our students an opportunity to take those dual enrollment courses. Uh, and uh, we know tuition is a problem there. So we want to make certain that we provide that opportunity for them along with the advanced placement courses. We also wanted to uh, uh, have a partnership with external providers, but we want that to be targeted. Uh, we want to spend our money on a targeted approach, knowing the uh, individual teacher and individual student goals. And so we know that data uh, plays a major, major factor in, uh, on our choosing with our external providers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Principal Tardy. And we're gonna go right into Callaway. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, how y'all doing? Good morning. All right, well, we're gonna uh, roll into this thing. Um, Good morning. First of all, uh, let me express that I am an incoming principal. So a lot of these things I have not seen in live action, uh, just a lot on paper because again, we've been out of school since March. So I've been working uh, diligently learning from uh, my very capable and trusted assistant principal, uh, Ms. Stacy Bailey is also on the, on, on the, on the, on the line today. So we're gonna go into uh, what we have too. We have transition of a couple of high schools in Jackson have academies that have transferred uh, on site from the Career Development Center. So we do have a Law and Public Safety Academy uh, that's established on campus. Also, uh, we're working to get teachers certified uh, to teach dual credit classes and hoping that we have an early college track for our kids so they can leave high school with at least nine college credit courses um under their belt to help them out um so again we're working with the continuing education opportunity for teachers to get those dual credit certifications uh and working with the re remote learning landscape is of course a challenge for us because we have a lot of kids even though we're an urban district we have a lot of kids that have connectivity issues and don't have devices so we have a lot of offline students um that we're working to um, educate as well as our online students. We use Canvas conferencing uh, as our uh, learning management system here. 
So we're working uh, and learning. Uh, we've been thrust into this thing. So it is a challenge, uh, but we're working on it. And uh, our teachers have been very receptive into uh, working in this virtual platform. Um, so that's that's a, that's a plot positive. Uh, we're working it with students at the center. We're working with uh, keeping our parents informed and engaged about our uh, Law and Public Safety Academy, as well as our early college academy that we're trying to uh, track and get going, uh, making sure they know the opportunities that students have for dual credit classes and um, the academy that's on site, as well as our career development center. Uh, we do offer ACT prep classes for the majority of our uh, 10th and 11th graders to increase the AT ACT scores um, for college and career readiness. Um, so also uh, teaching and learning again, we're trying to build an, acad uh, an academy of teachers that have that dual credit certification. So we can offer in every course subject and, and our electives, uh, things uh, like music appreciation, art appreciation uh, in, in, the, in the, the arts field, as well as the core content areas to have at least um, someone in every department that's dual credit certified to offer those college level courses for our kids. Um, again, we are focusing on virtual professional development. We're doing a lot of that now. We also have instituted uh, a social emotional learning platform because during this um, time of the pandemic and students not being physically connected with each other and teachers as well, uh, not being able to have that physical connection with kids. We focus a lot on um, the social, emotional, and well-being of our um, all of our stakeholders as well as restorative practices, uh, reaching out to the community. So, uh, and again, part of those post-secondary pathways, uh, again, leaning back to those dual credit courses, offering the opportunity to incorporate uh, career academies and earning college credits uh, at, the, at, at school on site, as well as uh, hosting uh, town hall meetings and parent academies to uh, keep our parents informed on the, those career pathways and, and, and dual credit course opportunities um, for our students on site. Um, we do need more opportunities for virtual academic counseling sessions. Our counselors do a great job of hosting those sessions. We have multiple streams of communication uh, technologies that we're using to keep parents and students engaged and informed. And that's basically where, where we are on paper. And again, when we get back to um, moving toward our hybrid setting, we'll have uh, more opportunities to uh, expand funds and get our teachers trained, pay for the training, pay for our kids' dual credit courses, and also uh, offering opportunities for on-site visits and bringing in consultants from those law and public safety uh, agencies in the uh, surrounding areas. Thank you. Again, what everybody's using, um, again, we use uh, Zoom for our adults. Uh, certain teachers on Google Meet, we have Microsoft Team that's available through our district. And we also use our Canvas conference and our big blue button. Um, we need all stakeholders at the table. This is an all hands on deck type of situation. Uh, again, students at the center, we have a strong uh, student council here. Uh, I think it helps also that uh, we have a lot of uh, Callaway alums that are employed here, including myself, I'm a graduate of Callaway High School. So that helps uh, in building connections with the community. Uh, also that helps with uh, you know, getting the word out and being connected and, and having a, um, a true stake at what's going on, uh, it helps. So um, that's basically you know, where we are uh, right now in October. And uh, we'll see how this landscape looks um, for the remainder of this year. And then when our kids come back to the hybrid uh, model in January. Thank you so very much. We appreciate um, your sharing. And for those who can, we have one more school to share. And that's Leake County. Take it away, Principal Anderson. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We'll try to make this as painless as possible and get through this as quick as we can. Um, 
we at uh, Lee County High School, um, we are CSI team, of course, and when we have uh, had a few issues, um, we've made some significant progress over the last year or so. Um, we were kind of disappointed that we didn't get the opportunity to see where we are in, in this last accountability. Um, we, were very, we had some very high hopes, but um, maybe we can take 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 the challenge moving forward and see if we can stay on the path that we had, we initially put ourselves on. Uh, when it came to uh, the landscape analysis, what we did, of course, is we went back and looked at our high school uh, redesign. And uh, what we tried to do is not include all the things that we put in the redesign, but some of the things that we wanted to add to the redesign. Um, we had already addressed what we were going to do in terms of looking at the schedule. We went to an AB schedule where we had 85 minute block. Uh, and the purpose of that was to increase the amount of, uh, of, of, of time that, uh, that teachers, of course, the students had in front of each other. But also we wanted to, to create a time where we could do common planning with PLCs and, uh, and, and PD. And what we were able to accomplish with that is um, we were able to create times in the afternoons from 2.30 to 3.35 where we could, we could uh, schedule those PLCs uh, and, uh, and we can provide that professional development. As a part of this, this landscape analysis, what we wanted to do moving forward from what we already established, we wanted to make sure that, um, that we uh, let teachers or try to encourage teachers to be more responsible for their own, their own PD. Uh, one of the things we're only going to school three days a week uh, where, where we have students and then two days a week, of course, where we are doing virtual stuff. And it affords us the opportunity, of course, to, uh, to do more meeting, uh, to do more cross-discipline cross uh, planning. Uh, and also with the, uh, with the input of our, our, our curriculum coaches that the district, of course, sends in. Um, and so far as the remote learning uh, you know, landscape and wanderings, uh, it really hasn't impacted us a great to a great, uh, uh, you know, greatly uh, because, you know, all of our, our teachers are on campus every day, the five days a week they're on campus, which means that they're free, of course, to meet with each other, meet with school improvement coaches. In terms of students at the center, what we had done is um, we just, exp you know, try to explain, uh, you know, try to, uh, uh, expand on some things. And one of the things that we want to do is, you know, in our initial redesign, we wanted kids to be more responsible or be more involved in terms of making decisions for themselves. Uh, you know, it, you know, be a part of the decision making process, I should say. Um, you know, we've, we've been able to accomplish that to some degree. We pro it's been a little bit better actually than now that we're doing it through the virtual platform and that we are able to, the kids, you know, we were able to afford them more opportunity to to, um, to be involved. In terms of teaching and learning, what we want to do is still concentrate on doing what we've already been doing, of course, is trying to concentrate on high quality instruction, uh, aligned to the Mississippi standards. And, and what we've been doing as, as administrators is we try to get department chairs. We have curriculum people that go in and see, see our teachers. And what we're trying to do is to put make sure that the product that we're putting out there will give us the re return that we expect to see, of course, when the assessments take place in the spring. In terms of post-secondary pathways, uh, we wanted, want our kids to be civic-minded when they leave here. We want to open up to the possibilities that education, of course, can provide. And uh, we've done that by uh, giving them service opportunities in terms of learning. We've made also, as a part of their graduation requirement, that they do community service. Uh, and we're trying to, of course, expose them to, uh, to even more dual credit. At present, I think we have uh, five dual credit courses that we're that, that we have made available of course to students and um, we would like to see that expand uh, uh, in in the very near future next slide please in terms of looking at organizing adults and students at the center teaching and learning and post-secondary most of our 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 ways to convene groups have been through uh, Google meet we use Google Google classroom as our LMS and and we've been very pleased with that. I think the district just purchased Canvas, so we may, uh, Canvas affords us the opportunity to do a few things that Google does not afford us. So we may, uh, you know, look at that as a, uh, something that we may explore doing, uh, you know, district-wide. Uh, in terms of uh, who we need at the table, yeah, the same, you know, the, the same, same people, instructional coaches, department members, of course, administrators, students, uh, when it comes to organizing adults. Uh, we also need, uh, in terms of students at the center, the students themselves, the school counselor, uh, parents, community stakeholders, 
uh, when it comes to teaching and learning. Once again, we're going to we the only thing that we did add here was in terms of looking at school school status. Someone said earlier about robocalls. You know, parents hate them. But one of the things that it affords us is the opportunity to reach a, a great many parents very, very quickly. Um, uh, and, and they're able to give us some feedback uh, or give us questions, of course, when they need uh, questions that be answered. Uh, in terms of post-secondary ways or uh, pathways, uh, we've been able to do virtual college tours, Zoom, Google Meet, uh, and then the people, of course, that are, are needed at the table, dual enrollment teachers, the school counselors, the students, the local community colleges, which is East Central Community College for us, and our vocational center that we have here at Lake County. Uh, next slide, please. Where does the money go? Well, in terms of looking at organizing adult, one of the things that we're doing, we're gonna, we already have one interventionist that we have currently. We're looking at, uh, we are a seven through 12 high school. So what we're looking at doing is, is, is taking that and making it two positions, a seven through seventh and eighth grade interventionist and then a nine through 12 interventionist. Uh, one of the things that we do know is that in terms of looking at our reading and math scores, uh, like I said, we were kind of disappointed that we didn't get to be assessed last year because we were kind of, uh, we we're kind of looking forward to see what the what what everything was going to be like. We made a pretty significant jump in year one, and we were hoping that that would be something, of course, that that would that would go a little bit further. Um, when we were we were kind of encouraged through the the benchmark testing that the district does, uh, and we were just we were looking forward to it. But unfortunately, of course, COVID happens. In terms of student at the center, we don't allocate money. We have not allocated money here from 1003A money because we use Title IV money. Uh, in terms of paying paying for dual enrollment stuff and uh, and uh, AP testing, uh, in terms of teaching and learning, high quality materials, of course, is going it's been at the focus. We've been we were uh, purchasing like I guess most most other CSI schools in terms of looking at Chromebooks and desktops stuff like that. We were able to put a pin on that uh, because of the CARES money. Uh, and, but one thing that school improvement did afford us the opportunities to be a lot further along, uh, you know, in terms of becoming one to one. Uh, before COVID happened, which means that we are in a lot better shape in, in terms of looking at the other schools in our district because we've been able to be a little bit proactive when it came to use of the 1003A money. Post-secondary pathways, uh, you know, you, I, you notice that I included in this sixth and seventh grade because of, uh, excuse me, for the seventh graders and the eighth graders because of ICAP. One of the things that we're exploring is trying to, to look at it from the standpoint of starting these kids, of course, in seventh grade with ICAP, and then taking them and, and, and kind of uh, seeing them through uh, post-secondary, uh, through the dual, dual enrollment, of course, and, and trying to get them more, uh, uh, more focused in terms of what it is, of course, that they hope to get from their, from their high school education. So we, uh, we didn't get to do uh, this, the, the summer bridge this summer. And the reason being is because of COVID. I did listen to one of the schools earlier that said that they did something virtually. I wish we would have gave, given that a lot more thought. I don't know uh, what I would, I was interested to know what kind of success they had when they did theirs. I wish uh, in the future, if we do have COVID, it becomes a factor. That's something we may explore for 2021. Thank you. That was quick one, I'm sorry. Thank you, um, Mr. Anderson. No, we appreciate you um, sharing. Um, we appreciate everyone because we do know that you were rushed. Um, if you would just give me just maybe seven more minutes and then I'll have you have you out. One of our challenges is we know what happens with being um, engaged virtually and that maybe after like 90 minutes, we begin to kind of tap out. And so we were trying to keep this under three hours most definitely. Um, and so we, we set up on um, establishing the goal of trying to do all this in two hours. We covered a lot of information and it was covered pretty quickly, but the reality is, or one of the positives is that you have the, um, the Google Docs and all of the, the other resources to go back and not only look at your feedback, but you can um, see the feedback from, um, from other schools as well. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of things that's on the slide that we have coming up next. Um, and just know that we will slow this down when we come back together again, so that we are not rushed, um, so that we are able to engage um, and, and interact with one another um, a little bit deeper. Um, so just know that the next time we pull the group together, 
we may have to look at this differently rather than trying to address everything in a, in a short two hour meeting, we may have to have a multiple or segmented meeting schedule so that we can give everyone the honor of being able to share um, what your efforts have been in this work over the last two and a half years. So thank you so much for being with us and contributing today. And I do apologize for just the, the fast paced nature of today's session, but just know that we will re, um, adjust for the next meeting. Um, so let's talk about the next meeting. Well, before the next meeting, one of the things we want you guys to be thinking about, all of you talked about um, things that you, you know, either inherited or that you were doing, but you might have had to shift gears, things that you've gotten out of the way, but now you're looking at these things. So now we want you to kind of look at the things that you've shared with this landscape analysis and start addressing the implementation gap, right? Are there gaps that were that were um, uncovered as you began to look at where you are in implementing what you wanted to accomplish based on the blueprint narrative and actually where you are now? And, and start engaging your coaches around um, just being a critical thought partner as it relates to um, being able to, to help you identify implementation gaps after reviewing your implementation, I mean, your narrative, um, blueprint narrative. And so that leads us into the next bullet, which really gets to um, um, technical assistance needs. Um, if, if there are technical assistance needs that you need, you, um, you have, you've been thinking, you've talked about, um, you know, implementing virtual learning, or you've talked about what um, your implementation plan might look like for implementing your learning management system or even your um, mentoring block and what that looks like. Does your curriculum need to be revisited? If there's a way that EGC can support you in that, then we want to most definitely make sure that you are aware that this is available to you. Again, we offered it last year. We're offered again now. Remember, we're stepping into this last year with the hope that, you know, at some point at the end of this year, we might be able to say, hey, you 10 schools are exited, right? So, but once you exit, we don't want you to move away from the thinking that you've gotten or um, the learning or the, the, the strategies that you've implemented since being a part of this. So can EGC help you think through what your sustainability piece might look like? So again, I want you to make sure that you um, take um, advantage of tapping into EGC and even um, your school improvement coach in our office for technical assistance needs as you begin to um, carry out even more components of your blueprint narrative in this, in this different space that we, we currently occupy um, due to the pandemic. Um, and I love the slide, Dr. Bob, that you shared that um, spoke to the disruption um, the opportunity, the disruption, and just even the examples that were provided, you know, from the way we shop to from the way we watch television um, to, to what it is now, right? So I just really love that, that analogy or that comparison to help us kind of see how we can leverage this disruption into some possible opportunities. It's, it's no different than what those organizations have done. They had to go to the drawing board and do some thinking and some strategizing and, and really being honest and, and identifying what those needs are for that particular context, but then making the shift and being able to make the shift um, successfully. Not saying without challenges or obstacles, but being able to make that shift. Um, so again, that slide is one of my favorite slides. I just wanted to let you know that. I think you already knew that, but I wanted to say it out loud. Um, we're also going to share with you a survey. You've been working in this work for about two and a half years, maybe some of you a semester, a little less than a semester, but um, this really has been about providing you with resources that can help you think through what, what, what um, your, your school community can look like, especially in this age of ESSA, even as it relates to looking at utilizing your, 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 your supplemental funds differently. So we really wanna talk um, get some feedback and some input from you about um, up to this point, what does um, just your, your input and your feedback on how you have been able to utilize this, um, this work or the, the evidence and the, the resources that you've had access to um, to carry out the strategies to improve your high schools. 
Um, just know, go ahead and put this down, but do remember this, we will probably have an, a, a modified approach to how we do the next meeting. Um, so just know it'll probably be, right now we have the tentative date for February 23rd. Um, this may become a multi-day meeting um, only because we have 10 schools and we have so much information and I feel really badly that I feel like you guys were, you know, had to be rushed and cut short in sharing your information and even as it relates to the breakouts. And I want to create the condition for you to have um, the opportunity to do what this, this, this process is supposed to do, be engaged in a networked improvement community experience, learning with and from your peers. So again, um, just know right now we have February 23rd as a tentative date. You can go ahead and mark that down, but I really will be seeking um, some specific things um, about how we might be able to adjust this. So you can kind of skip over the other bullet, <laughs> the next bullet, save the night um, date, um, the nine to 11. We will be looking at what that time structure looks like, still honoring what, you know, where people kind of tap out as it relates to being engaged in a virtual setting. But we just want to make sure that we're able to, to get um, your um, efforts like really laid out and clear. So again, um, just know that we got the date, but that's going to probably be adjusted so that we can be fair to everyone that's um, contributing to the call. And so then there's another piece that we have um, that we really want you to got you guys to engage. So before your next meeting, which will be in February, we're going to have you engage in empathy in interviews. And there's a process that we're going to lay out. It's in the chat right now if you want to um, open that. But um, we're going to send you additional details. And we will probably um, have just like a quick call with you to really kind of go over what this looks like. But we want you to engage with one another. So you see the pairings under in red on the screen. Um, Callaway and Lee County, you're paired together. Yazoo City and Wingfield, Lanier, Cahoma County, Philadelphia, Coldwater, and Northside and Blue Mountain. And so based on these pairings, you're going to engage in a set of interviews that you're going to be sharing um, in our February convening whenever we come back together in February. And so Linda has placed, not Linda, Maria has placed in the, in the chat um, the mixtape or understanding the mixtape. And like I said, we will share additional details with you about this process um, at a later time, but we will make sure you have it in enough time so that we can answer or clarify any questions that you might have. But I believe the resource that we have for you in the chat, and I will send it in an email, will give you enough um, information. Remember, if we're able, I've heard a couple of people I know say they like what another school has said. And so again, being able to share with one another and learn for one, from one another is one of the most powerful things that we can have um, happen as a result of your engagement. So again, Linda, I'm going to see if there's anything you want to add. But if, if you don't have anything to add, we can go to the I, next slide. I think Bob is going to just give a couple of closing thoughts. Perfect. Perfect. So Dr. Bob, I'm turning it back over to you. Thanks, Sanja. This is going to be really quick. I just want to thank everybody for your time and effort today, but really more importantly for the work you're doing in your schools. It's, it's so clear when you gave your report outs on, you know, you could hear in your voice the challenges you're facing, but also the optimism and care with which you're meeting them um, and how you're working together to push through in these challenging times and make great differences for your students and your uh, communities. And one area I really want to commend everybody on um, is that almost all of you, I think, mentioned a continuation of building out dual enrollment and AP um, and, and college chat and shoe sessions for seniors. And that's been a real concern nationally that sort of our seniors will get lost in the COVID shuffle. Um, and a lot of those key supports they would normally get face to face, they wouldn't get. Um, and it's so clear that across all your schools um, that you're really paying great attention to this um, and keeping, keeping those supports going so these kids aren't lost in the shuffle. Um, and for that, I just want to really commend you for the, the great work you're doing. Thank you, Dr. Bob. Um, so I don't know what the next slide is or if it comes to an end, but I just again want to thank you. Um, so I just got a, got a note that I'm going to have to change the 23rd anyway, because that's the state ACT assessment. So Linda, we will be looking at that date anyway. So it works out. Thank you, um, Mr. Gates, for sending me that email. So. Um, 
you have our contact information, please take us up on any kind of um, supports that you might need as you're thinking through your next steps, or as you're thinking through beyond um, you know, this first semester. Some of you um, are going full scale face to face in the spring. And then there's, you know, that we just don't know. It's just so uncertain. So again, um, thank you for engaging with us today. And um, we will conclude the meeting here. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact either myself or Ms. Linda, and we will be working on getting you some um, support and feedback that you need. So thank you again for, for your time today. We were just about 20 minutes over, so I apologize. <laughs> but thank you guys you. are the best. Thanks for coming. Thank you.